Hello. Thank you for watching. Today we are going to talk about Libra and I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. So come in. Let's talk about Libra. We're going to do a deep dive all about Libra today. And if you, this is going to be very essential for you if you are a sun, moon, or rising in Libra. Um, however, we all have Libra in our chart. So um, if you know where you have Libra, um, you know, we can do a little bit of a mini reading today. We can talk about that. If you are here live with me, um, and so thanks for joining. We're going to be talking about Libra. We're deep diving all about Libra, um, the good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to talk about the gifts of Libra. So if you have a Libra in your life, you know what um, you can look from them. Um, also some of the shadow sides of Libra. So every sign has um, light and dark. Every sign has a high expression and a low expression. So if you're new to me, my name is Misty Sheen and I, I want to tell you about how I found astrology. So in 2012, I was working from home and I was an in-home daycare provider. However, I didn't love what I did and I didn't, wasn't passionate about it particularly. I was passionate about parenting in general, um, because being a present parent. And that's how I ended up finding myself in doing daycare because people just wanted me to watch their kids alongside of, since I was already home. And so I did that. Um, however, because I wasn't passionate about it and because I was working sun up to sundown, I found myself in burnout. I found myself in probably stage one or stage two of adrenal fatigue. I was exhausted all the time. I was hooked up to my coffee cup constantly. Um, I couldn't lose weight. I was really frustrated um, with where I was. And I ended up going on this health journey. I ended up losing 36 pounds. I got my energy back and everyone wanted to know what I was doing. And this is where I started to learn about online marketing. Um, I was with a network marketing company and everyone just wanted to know what I was doing. And I started coaching people and I found myself as a coach accidentally. I fell into the coaching world, knew nothing about coaching prior to that. And the first couple of years, it was doing well, especially since I had both businesses going for a while. Um, I ended up deciding I loved coaching. I loved helping people online. I loved the passive income and I ended up dropping the original business and I was just working online. And however, I felt something was missing. I loved what I was doing. I loved helping people. I loved being to coach people through messenger. Um, I just felt like something was missing. And a, fr um, a mentor, my mentor now, we were connected on Facebook. I had taken an Instagram training from her couple months prior and she put up a Facebook post offering business astrology readings to start her podcast and I and my hand went up I said yes me please and the what I got from that reading was very intriguing and it was something I didn't really know a lot about astrology up to that point I knew I was a Leo that's about all I knew and you can actually listen to that reading. It is on the Life Path Astrology reading. You want to scroll all the way back. This was in 2017. And um, it the episode was called 
throw them a curveball. And essentially what my mentor was telling me on that podcast was I needed to lean more into my Scorpio rising. And I knew nothing about Scorpio. I really don't have a lot of Scorpios in my life. I don't have a lot of close Scorpios in my life. And so I really didn't know anything about Scorpio. Um, and so I had to do some investigating. And so once I started learning about my own natal chart and how to apply it to my own personality, I started learning about things about myself and I started, um, applying it to my business. And I loved it. I love the psychology behind astrology. I love learning about myself. Um, I love learning about, it also helped me in my relationships. I was able to relate to other people because all of a sudden I started learning about my, my husband. What my husband's an Aries. So I was like, well, what does Aries, what does that mean? You know, I didn't really know a lot about any of the signs. And I started relating to my children better. So astrology has changed my life. It's become kind of like my big sister that I never had. And, um, and so it's completely changed my life. It's completely changed my business, how I show up in my business. And so I am currently going through a certification to be a Life Path Astrology reader from my mentor, um, Angel Quintana. And um, she's no longer doing astrology readings anymore. And so this is why I decided to get certified so I could um, provide this transformational experience to my, uh, my own clients. So um, today we're going to talk about Libra. And I've also had to do a lot of investigating about Libra because I have Libra in my 12th house. So if you don't know about astrology, um, in, in the readings that I do, I do, uh, we do talk about the 12th house. It is the house of your karmic debt. It is the house, uh, house um, it is the house of subconscious beliefs. And I have Libra there. So um, if you want to dive deep into my shadows, um, you can find them there. So I've had to work with a lot of the Libra themes. So we are going to talk about, let's talk about the good about Libra. So Libra is um, in the tarot deck. If you're familiar with tarot, Libra is represented by the Empress. Libra is ruled by Venus. Venus um, rules over love and beauty. So a Libra is an air sign. They're very intellectual. They're very social. Um, they love balance. They are, they rule over justice, especially social justice. Um, and they love all things love and beauty. They are known as the fashionistas. Um, one of my mentors, um, I heard say once that Libra's the girl that shows up with the pink hair. So if you have pink hair, you might identify with being a Libra. Um, and even if Libra's not in your sun, your moon, or your rising, you still have Libra in your chart. So you just want to go and run your chart and see where you have Libra showing up. So Libra um, loves things to be in balance, aesthetically pleasing. Some of their gifts, um, they are the mediator. They're very, they rule over relationships. So they're very good in relationships. They're very good at seeing all sides of the story. And they are also known as the hostess with the mostess because they are very social and they will be the one who's like going to all the parties. And when they're showing up to the party, they're, they're looking good, first of all. And second of all, they're going to be going around the room and getting to know people. They are the ones who are, they are the connectors. So they're not necessarily getting to know people 
for themselves. However, they will notice like, oh, wow, that person should be, they should know this other person over here and they will connect to them. They will introduce them. Libra is so good about that. So um, I have my radiant. I want to get the Libra chart. I also have um, the Oracle of Radiant Sun. Maybe we can get the uh, Libra card out of here. So this is Libra in Mar Mars and Libra. I have Mars and Libra um, choice. So again, you see the scales here. Um, they're often conflicted by choices. And so this is one of the shadows of Libra is she can't make a choice. Often left in indecision. We have the sun in um, Libra is all about harmony. She just wants peace and love and beauty. Here's another one. So this one is Mercury in Libra and Mercury is the planet of communication. So we have influence. So she can be a little seductive because she is um, one of another shadow of Libra is the people pleaser. She's very good at knowing what it is that you want and I'm going to work so I can give it to you. And that could be good or bad, right? Um, th the qualities of the signs can be used for good or bad on almost all of them. So what else can we say about Libra? Okay, here we have indecision, which is Venus in Libra. Maybe we'll read that one. Jupiter in Libra. So if you have your Jupiter in Libra, Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion, and this says um, negotiation. So we already talked a little bit about Libra's so good at negotiation. She's so good at identifying what is going to motivate you and then identifying how she can give it to you. Here we have the moon in Libra and it's all about companionship. So because Libra rules over relationships, she, she loves, she just wants love. She just wants to be loved. And often she can lose herself in relationships. And that is a shadow side of Libra because she gives so much and she wants nothing more than to love and to be loved that often she loses herself in the process. Okay, so I want to read a little bit from this book. I got this Oracle deck um, when I started going through my certification because it just helps me to know the signs a little bit better.
So moon in Libra. They really care how others are feeling and be quickly upset when all is not harmonious. Librans are vulnerable to immersing their own emotional needs in someone else's difficulties. The biggest problem, um, it indicates a powerful desire to please and keep everything in balance. And because of this, a lot of times Libra doesn't like conflict and she will avoid conflict at all costs. So this can be a gift. It can also be a shadow if you are um, compromising your own wants, desires, your own needs, um, just so you can keep the peace. I'm also gonna look at Saturn in Libra. Saturn ends up, um, Saturn rules over order and discipline and often can mean restriction. He is the planet of restriction. So wherever you have Saturn, um, this can cause some problems. This um, might be some hard lessons for you to learn. So Saturn in Libra, it's social responsibility and work for the community. A strong sense of justice in relationships can give people with this sign um, outstanding abilities in areas of legal matters. They have the potential for gaining great respect from others, but they risk the danger that their desire to see both sides of a question can lead to indecision. The devotion of uh, Librans to a relationship or partnership is long. Um, they often say, if you have Saturn in Libra, you might not find love until you're in your 30s or later. So so this is Libra. She rules over relationships. She loves all things love and beauty. And um, Venus also rules over money and feeling worthy. So if you have Libra in the 12th house, like I do, you may not feel worthy. Or if you have Venus in a place that's not favorable, um, you may not feel, you have may have this sense of feeling unworthy, especially when it comes to relationships. Um, because Venus rules, she rules money, she also rules relationships. And so wherever you have Venus, you can often understand how you show up in relationships. This was a big key for me once I started to work with Venus and I started to understand what I needed in my relationships. I was able to um, just understand myself better, communicate to my partner better about what it was that I was actually needing. So if you want to go deeper, I would love to do a life path astrology reading and we can look at, um, we look at all the things. We look at your gifts, your challenges. We look at your emotional world. We look at your motivation. We look at your soul purpose and some of the biggest life challenges that you are facing. Um, and you can find more information on my website. Right now it is um, donation only. So um, give what you can, give what you think is um, the reading is worth. But I have been having, my clients have having so many breakthroughs um, with these astrology readings. And um, I hope you join us. I hope you join me next month as we dive deep into all things Scorpio and 
the good parts of Scorpio and some of the shadow parts of Scorpio.